right guys, let me give you just a real quick rundown of the mitosis lab we're going to be doing. So you got this paper, we're going to be doing it with a microscope. The first thing you'll need to do is identify the different phases of mitosis, how they look on a microscope. You can use your sketches from the bead lab, you can also use your pictures from the quick lab, but it should be pretty clear which is in which phase. I've got pretty much all the phases here in boxes, you're just going to pick which one goes with what phase there. And then you'll be ready to do the microscope lab, and you could even knock this out for homework. Come in ready to go. When you're looking at the onion root on the slide, there should be two to three of these on each slide. Some of them are better than others, so if you don't see any on one root, maybe slide over to the next root using your scanning power powers. When you're looking at it, Roots grow the opposite of our hair. Your hair grows from the very base, grows longer. Roots and plants grow from the very end. So this part right here is actually the part that's growing. By growing, I mean right in here in your meristematic region, that's where mitosis and cytokinesis is happening. If you look up here in the maturation region or even in the elongation region, you're going to see cells that are specializing, cells that are just sitting there in, in G1. If you look down here in the root cap, that's like a protective end that sort of drills through the dirt. So you need to look right in here in the meristematic region. And you'll just go through here, you'll find one in each phase, make sure you know that you show me. And like before, stampy, stampy, stampy. And then comes the fun part. You'll scroll on down here, you're going to pick some random area in the meristematic region. Just pick an area and you're going to count the number of cells in each of the phases. Just right in your viewing area, just you know, randomly move it, county, county. You'll do that for as many times as it says, and if you guys are ahead, you could have you do one, your partner do another. The more data you collect, the more accurate results will be. So you'll count them up, you'll figure out what fraction you have. So if you have a total of like 800 cells, you'll be dividing everything by 800. Figure out the percentage, that's all pretty easy math. The tricky part, and by tricky part, I mean still pretty easy math, you're going to figure out the number of degrees if you're going to make like a nice circle graph. Remember, 100% would be 360, so that's where you can use like multiply pretty much your percentage by 360. That tells you how many degrees. Again, that's be your percentage. Multiply that by 360 degrees. That will give you the degrees. Or if you're feeling frisky, you could do like weird proportion math where 100% is 360 and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You'll make your circle graph, and that will actually represent roughly how much time each cell spends in each phase of the cell cycle. For those of you wondering how long these phases are, we'll get a good relative compared to each other using that. And then, as always, conclusion questions. That's it!